So today I'm going to measure the current draw of a few Amigas using this multimeter. And to do that, what I've done, I have hacked into the 5 volt line in this power supply here, and it's going through the multimeter uh, so I can measure the current. This is a meanwhile RT50B power supply and it can draw 4 amps on the 5 volt line. That should be enough for any Amiga, but it would be nice to verify that for real. So I've got the meter set on the amps range. This particular multimeter has, it's got milli microamps and uh, milliamps range, but, but they're not going to be enough for this Amiga because basically this is going to draw over an amp. And the other thing you need to be aware of is that, is that even if it didn't, the burden voltage of having this in line with the Amiga means that it will drop the voltage a bit. So if I put it on the full amps range, it will drop 0.04 volts per amp. So that should be acceptable. I don't think this is going to draw over a couple of amps. So that should be fine. It's going to drop just about 0.1 volt and that should be fine. It'll still keep it at five volts. And I did actually find this page, which I think has been offline for quite a while because I remember seeing it a long time ago. That's a really detailed page about Amiga power supplies and how much they draw and stuff like that. If we go down here, there are actually some measured consumption units. I've got a 600, a 1200 and a 500, so I could actually verify some of these right now. If I go down to the bottom, there is a mention about the RT RT50B saying, meanwhile, RT50B is plenty powerful enough with a four amp rating on the five volt line. So that's exactly what I'm using here. I didn't know someone written this before I did it. Keep in mind, it requires a 0.2 amp load on the pl plus 12 volt for stable operation. Now, actually, I think that's wrong because they're saying put all these resistors in and stuff, but that's not actually what the data sheet says. Tolerance includes setup tolerance, line regulation, and load regulation. When multi-channel output, it is recommended that channel one load is greater than 10%. So that's channel one load. Now channel one is the five volt line. So what it's basically saying is you need to load the five volt line to at least 10% for the 12 volt line to regulate properly. That means I don't need to put any resistors on or anything like this because the 5 volt line in the Amiga is always going to be loaded to more than 10% because I think the Amiga is going to draw like over an amp all the time. They've read it as you have to load the 12 volt line, but you don't. You have to load the 5 volt line for the 12 volt line to be stable. But that said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this up and I'm going to put record mode on, which is basically going to record the min, max and average. So we'll just get, it will do a bleep every time the voltage goes up to a new max. Now, I am being careful with this because this power supply is exposed, so I'm keeping it unplugged until I actually turn it on. So I'll put it on so it shows us the max, and I'm just gonna boot the Amiga test kit now, and we'll see what it does. So it got to 1.8 amps there, and now it's the floppy drive started up. So it didn't get past 1.8 amps. But if I look on here, I can actually, on this, the reason I'm booting this is because it's got this signal test thing. Oh, there we go, it went up, oh, it went up to 1.9 there when it accessed the uh, floppy drive. It's got this signal test thing where you can turn the motor on and off and you can step it as well. So if I just look at the actual, so that's the actual value that's drawing at the moment. If I just turn the floppy drive motor on, yeah, you can see it, it draws about 200 milliamps there, roughly. Uh, and if I step it as well, I can, I can actually press F6 to step the stepper motor. Um, and that's not really doing a lot. And if I turn the motor off, it drops back down. So the floppy drive's drawing about 200 milliamps, basically. So that kind of goes to show me that if they all did that, because you can have three, you can basically have three externals in here as well, then uh, you could probably put three external floppy drives on this as well and it still would be fine because if each one just drew a couple of hundred milliamps, we're still well under the four that this meanwhile can supply. This is now actually reading a, just reading a floppy drive, floppy disk. And uh, it got to 1.966 amps on the meter. So I think that's about as high as I can get it. This machine's actually got a SD card hard disk in it as well. That might make a little bit of difference. From what I can tell is when it's accessing it, it's accessing it now. It's probably drawing about another 100 milliamps to access that. Yeah, so that's booted now. And it, it didn't get to the, it didn't get past the max of 1.966 there. So that's my limit for an Amiga. That's an Amiga 1200 with an SD card, um, an SD card hard disk and one, flop, one real floppy drive in it. So I didn't quite get to two amps basically, and I'm averaging about 1.5 amps most of the time here. If I just put like a disc in here like this, 
Yeah, it, it, it didn't bleep, so it didn't get higher. It's going up to about 1.8 every time the disc goes in. And just for fun, I've got this Rebels 2 Mega demo. And one of the interesting things about this demo is that it, it turns the floppy drive motor on and then never turns it off. So it actually draws quite a lot of current just, just all the time. Oh, I actually need to... Doesn't actually run properly on the Amiga until I turn the instruction cache off on the Amiga 1200. But it's a good one to test because I can run the same one on the 600. Yeah, so it's um, this this particular demo has just not turned the floppy motor off, which they can do. They've got control of it, so they've just left it on all the time. So yeah, so it's still actually drawing. So it's drawing about 1.8, but like I said, that's because the motor's on. And even if I go into the next demo, it doesn't really draw anymore. So for the Amiga 1200, the answer is roughly, there you go. So 1.9 amps was the peak for the Amiga 1200. I can't seem to get it to draw anymore. It's also worth mentioning this doesn't have a memory expansion in. So I'll try some other computers now and see if we can get any variance between, I've got an Amiga 600 and 500 and we can try those as well. So same thing with the Amiga 600 now, except this one doesn't have an SD card hard disk in it. It's got a real floppy drive and it does have a one meg expansion. So this is a two megabyte Amiga 600. I'll just boot it with the Amiga test kit disk in again. We'll see what we get. Oh, it went over two amps. Oh, and it's, it's actually idling. The, the floppy drive light's not on here. Anymore. So yeah, the, floppy, the floppy's not on. And this is actually idling at a higher current than the Amiga 1200. The Amiga 1200 is actually using less. That's interesting. So what did it max out at? Oh, there it was. It was, it was just over two amps it maxed out at. So let me just do what I did before. I'm going to go to the, I'll go to the floppy drive and I will do the signal test. Oh, and we can just turn the motor on. So the motor's on now. Oh, there we go. And I can step it as well. So yeah, just over two amps. So that's interesting. The Amiga 600 actually draws more current than the Amiga 1200 doing basically the same task, but just over two amps. So in this case, still the, the meanwhile four amp power supply is perfectly fine. Let's try the Rebels Mega Demo as well. So it's not quite got over two amps. Oh, just over two there. Remember this demo is leaving the drive motor on. Even with this little bit higher current drawer on the Amiga 600, this would actually be fine with even three external floppy drives would still work with this four amp supply. That's pretty good. Right, so here we go with the last one. This is the Amiga 500. I'm gonna boot the Amiga test kit now. Oh. It booted, what did it get to? 1.8 amps. So that didn't actually go as high as the Amiga 600. That's interesting. Let's go to the floppy drive screen. Let's just start the motor. Oh, so it went up to 1.9 when it accessed the motor there. If I turn it on. Oh, yeah. So about the same as the Amiga 600, that one. There it is, just about two at the moment. And that's just got the motor, that's just got the drive motor turned on at the moment. So just over two amps. So what did we max out at? 2.023, which is almost identical to the A600. So let's boot the Mega Demo and let's just see if we get anything different with that. I'll just put it on just so we can see what it does as it boots. Oh, 1.9 as it's loading. Oh, it just went a little bit higher then when it went into that mode there. Just a little bit. So what did that max out at? 2.046 amps. So the Amiga 500, at least this particular model, this has got a one megabyte 
memory expansion in by the way. This one is about the same as the Amiga 600 with two megabytes in, it's not really that much different. But there, there you see it, we maxed out at 2.046 amps. So I'll put all those results on the screen right now. I think that just shows basically that there is really no problem with this four amp meanwhile power supply here. It's absolutely fine. It's got more than enough power for the 500, 600 and 1200. And in fact, the 1200 is the best out of all of them. It uses slightly less power, not much, but slightly less. And there's definitely enough power in there to be able to plug in three external floppies if you still wanted to do something like that. So there wouldn't be any problem. So that's it. So I just wanted to do a little excursion just to measure the power draw of these Amigas because I've never tried it before and I wanted to see if I could do it. And um, those are the results. You need about two amps, say. And with just one last little demo, just to show that the 12 volt line in this Meanwell power supply does actually regulate quite well. 11.65 volts. So that's perfectly acceptable for the 12 volt line, I think. It's done if it's using the 12 volts to get the floppy disk. It's definitely using it for the audio. But there you go. So 11.65 volts on the 12 volt line. And in case you're interested, there's the 5 volt line, 5.076.